So hello and welcome everyone. This lecture is part of our research lecture series where we're highlighting and showcasing some of the projects that the EES has funded or supported over the last few years. So I am delighted to introduce uh, Hesham Abdel Kader, who is our speaker today, who received both a Heritage at Risk grant and a Centenary Award in 2022 and 2023, respectively, for his project at the Greco-Roman city of Hermopolis Magna, which we will be hearing about today. So, of course, the lecture is entitled Excavation of a Roman Public Bath at Hermopolis Magna, and uh, we will be hearing about two different seasons. If you are an EES member, you will have received this issue of Egyptian archaeology, the spring 2020. Three uh, issue where Hesham did publish an article on the first season of excavations at this site, uh, but we will of course be hearing about the second season, which was awarded secondary funding uh, by our society. But to introduce uh, Hesham, he is an archaeologist in the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, uh, specialising in Roman archaeology in Egypt. He has more than twelve years of experience in excavations and management of heritage sites in Egypt. Currently, he is a final year candidate for a PhD in archaeology from Ayn Shams University on the subject of baths and water management in Hermopolis Magna in the Roman period. He recently received a Heritage at Risk grant and a Centenary Award, uh, as I said, and he also received the award of Professor Zahi Hawass as the best archaeologist in the field of excavations in Egypt for the year 2023. So I'm very delighted to be able to welcome Hisham to our online stage for this research lecture. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll hand over to you for the presentation. Thank you so much. Good afternoon for everyone. Uh, well, well, Hisham Abdel Adel, as uh, Charlotte Gordon said, I am archaeologist at the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities in Egypt and PhD candidate at Ancham University uh, in Cairo. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to say thanks to all uh, participants for attendance and special thanks to Egypt Exploration Society uh, for giving me the opportunity to present the uh, results of my archaeological expedition in Hermopolis Magna. Uh, thanks so much for good organization and provision uh, of the lecture. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Carla Graves, uh, EES director. And uh, thank you for uh, Charlotte Gordon. Hermopolis Magna, the site of Hermopolis Magna, the ancient site of Hermopolis Magna, is located on the western bank uh, of the Nile in Middle Egypt, at a distance approximately 40 kilometers south of the city of Elmenia and 7 kilometers to the northwest of the city of Malawi. Uh, the archaeological site occupies nowadays an area of more than one and a half kilometers from north to south and one kilometer from east to east. It's surrounded by three villages, the village of Ashmolin uh, and its cemetery and in, in uh, the Islamic period of Hermopolis, uh, it is historical geographic and extension in the Islamic period of Hermopolis, which is turned in an extension of Egyptian city of Khemenu, uh, the village of Ibrahim Awad to southwest and the village of Idara and its cemetery to the north side. The east side, the site is delighted by agricultural lands. The city of Hermopolis underwent remarkable development during the Roman period, thanks to its states as a nomi and metropolis, uh, the dynamism of its inhabitants, and probably thanks to proximity with the new founded city of Antiopolis. Established on the other side of the Nile by the Emperor Hadrian on the, uh, in the early 2nd century AD. The remains of the city were quite well preserved at the beginning of the 19th century and were subject to several excavation campaigns in the 20th century. My research question, why did I decide to target excavation around the passes in her of her mobile smart lab? Uh, at the beginning, I, uh, an important question was arising. Where were the passes of Hermopolis in the Ptolemaic and Roman period? The city had an estimated population more than 30,000 people in the Roman period. 
a number of architectural structures were disrupted in 1931 in Hermopolis Magna by Court Battle as a public pass. Public passes. Court Battle, a member of German expeditions that worked in Hermopolis between 1929-1939, led by John Trudor and founded by the Hildesheim Museum in Germany. Uh, my walking survey that I contacted on the site during the year 2020 uh, confirmed that most of this structure not passes, which is exception uh, with the exception of the remains of, arch uh, of architectural structure east of the Cemetery. So I decided to choose that idea and, uh, and the topic of my dissertation to obtain PhD in archaeology from Ashams University in Cairo. This is my walking survey. I started my walking survey in September in 2020. Me and uh, my colleague helped me, Ahmad Atta, and the local inspector in Hermopolis, uh, Dr. Sayed Abdel Malik. But before my walking survey, I collect the many data about Hermopolis Magna. I mean, make a data basement about Hermopolis Magna, especially the data speak about and the source or bibliography is big about uh, Hermopolis. Uh, in Roman period and Ptolemaic period. Also, especially the publication uh, about the exhibitation which worked in Hermopolis before, like a German exhibitation which worked in Hermopolis between 90, uh, 1929 1939, uh, led by John Truder. Also, the publication of British Museum, uh, British excavation which worked in Hermopolis, founded by the uh, British Museum and led by Jeffrey Spencer and Donald Pelly. I worked in Hermopolis between 1981-1989. Uh, battle, court battle, as I said, it is a member uh, in German exhibition. And uh, he uh, first one speak about Hermopolis passes. He just uh, described eight structure in Hermopolis Magna as a public passes. But my walking survey just I found the three. Number one and number seven and number five. Uh, except this, all of the structure destroyed it. After I studied number one and number seven, I found it and I discovered it, that building is not passes. It is uh, the function of that building, uh, especially number seven and number one, relate with uh, other fu uh, function, like relate with industrial activities or system or water tanks, but sure it is not passes. About number five, number five just remains uh, located east of the Ashmonian Cemetery for Muslims. Just a small remains covering by uh, dam of, of, of uh, buttery shirts and uh, waste from uh, the people uh, surround, uh, community around the, uh, the site. I can't determine if this remains past uh, or not. So I target that area to uh, make excavation in 2021. But the first step is found reason. Therefore, excavation on architectural remains east of the symmetry was necessary to first confirm that function of the structure if it was a public pass or not. Therefore, excavation concession had, uh, had to be obtained from the permit committee at the Ministry of Tourism and the Antiquities in Cairo but before that, I had to fund an institute to find the institution to fund this excavation campaigns. My PhD dissertation supervisor, Dr. Pierre Angier Rodden, helped me a lot, as well as Professor Barry Camp, rest in peace, Barry, who directed me to the Egypt Exploration Society to fund my first archaeological campaigns in 2022. Actually, I have received the support of the Egypt Exploration Society twice. The first one from Heritage and Risk Grant in 2022, and the second one from the Centennial Award in 2023, which gave me opportunity to complete my excavation work in uh, this bus. The work of bus skills. Before starting the excavation, especially first season, uh, if it's especially my first season, I faced the many obstacles to the work. The most important for which uh, the most important of which was occupation of the site. It appears in the picture by the community surrounding the site, which used the site to rise level stock. 
in addition to uh, dumping of all kind of waste. Waste from building demolition, household waste, as well as animal waste. As you can see in the picture and slide, but I overcome this obstacle in several ways. Sometimes by force and, uh, or sometimes by awareness. This picture from the, for the site pre uh, excavation in uh, March uh, 2022, during my excavation in first season, after I removed every uh, uh, demolition waste and uh, house end waste, uh, just uh, except I have a, a plant waste in the surface, I move it in the in, in the in the first day of excavation by manually. There's two pictures from archive from this hive archive for the site taken by court battle in 1931 uh, for the remains uh, which we sang before excavation, which we sang that is a uh, public pass located eastern of the National Marine Cemetery. That's my site after my uh, after the end of my second season. You can see after I revolved or discovering the, uh, the bass or the whole section of the bass, and adjacent of the building, we can see a huge blocks uh, limestone belonging to a temple. I think that in the back of Ptolemaic or Roman period, but not published until now uh, before uh, because it no uh, it is not targeted uh, before any archaeological mission which worked in Hermopolis before. The methodology of uh, work in first excavation season also come to work from the known to unknown. Since the walking survey in 2020, the remains of part of the eastern wall of the pass were found. There was no one to me. In addition to the map drawn by Kurt Patton in 1931 uh, for archaeological remains that were clearly visible in his time, I was guided by that map to move from unknown to known until most of the past equipment were revolted at the end of second season. The first season. The first season took place between March and April 2022, uh, funded by Heritage uh, and Rescue Grant uh, from Egypt Exploration Society. Actually, my result is uh, in the season come un with unexpected uh, which are discovering the whole section of the bus and the swig system and water supply system. The first season in Eastern Bass of Hermobilis Magna has already brought a lot of information that is very useful for the future reassessment of this building, but it has not yet been entirely cleared for lack of time. So a second field mission in Eden to proceed to the excavation of northern part uh, of the building, which showed including the main entrance and cold rooms. The calderium. The important thing which I discovered in the uh, first season is the heat heating system. Uh, the whole section is occupied, occupied by an uh, intercreated heating system with a several furnaces surrounding the section uh, from north and south sides. Uh, the hot section contains several rooms for public three with a mini bathtub in good condition, decorated with the marble floors, and the very meticulous and well preserved swig system. Uh, actually, in my past, I found two swig systems. One for collecting the wastewater from the western bathtub in the western side of, uh, of the bath, and one for collecting wastewater uh, from the bus stops in the eastern uh, side of the bus. But I don't have any archaeological evidence proof that uh, the two systems have a connection. But I think if I contain my excavation, especially the, uh, the eastern uh, side, sorry, the south side, maybe I found the canal to connection between the two systems. The second season, the second season, Third place between April and May in 2023, funding by Centennial Award uh, from EAS. 
The result of the second season, the hot section was entirely clear. It contained several rooms with a bus tops and limestone floors. Waste water was evacuated through a complicated sewage system. While heating for the water was controlled using a well preserved furnaces and the heating system. During the second season of excavation, the entry heating system of hot section was refolded and several multi furnaces were also found. Excavation were expanded in the entrance area to refold the main water tank for the pass and the square pass to blend it with limestone slabs. The outcomes of the field work at the Roman Pass in Hermopolis Magna has supplemented the architectural plan of water management in an important regional center with an estimated population of 30,000 people during the late Roman period. Actually, I used uh, many kind of documentation, especially uh, to document my structure, especially after I end second season. Uh, the important one, it's photogrammetry. I used the photogrammetry for make a, mod, a 3D model for the bus. That is the three mod, 3D model for every equipment in the bus, especially the hot section. Also photo showing the entire parts of the bus after end of second season. And plan of showing elevation uh, elevations in the bus, and plan uh, architectural plan for the bus that is uh, making by uh, 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 GPS and total station and use also AutoCAD program. Uh, that's cooperation between me and my colleague Ali Samir, surveyor here in uh, Malawi, inspectorate. My comparisons and parallels. When I look for uh, parallels uh, similar with my past, especially from Delta and uh, Upper Egypt, I found more. But the very similar one is El Pornoji Pass. El Pornoji Pass discovered by Egyptian mission in El Pornoji archaeological site in Delta and Bahira uh, in 2022. But not published until now. I think uh, me and my supervisor, Pierre Angier Rodan, we think this is, this is past dating back uh, late Roman period. It's very similar with my uh, my past, especially in architectural design. Byzantium pass in Maria, also similar with my past, especially in semicircular bus stops. Also, and uh, in uh, hot section, uh, uh, sorry, and cold uh, section, and in mid entrance. The Roman pass in Karnak, it is not Byzantium, but dating back to uh, Roman period, uh, I think in uh, third century AD. Uh, it is similar with my pass in uh, uh, switch system and water supply system. Uh, the dates, the dating, the dates of the past likely to time between the 4th to 6th century AD. Railing on two main reasons. The first is, uh, the first one is architectural design of the past, which is similar to many of variants that have been compared to Hermopolis passes. For example, passes of Talpolosium, Maria, Kumbaldosha, in Lower Egypt at Suez Kilizima or at Suez Kilizima and Sheikh Zawiyat in Sinai, El Pornoji Pass in Bahira and Delta, and Roman Public Pass of Karnak in Luxor, most, most of which dating back to late Roman period, except the uh, uh, Roman passes of Karnak date back to uh, 3rd century AD. The second reason. The second reason is that uh, through uh, the discovery of very small bronze tool, no longer than 10 centimeter lens, we can see uh, we can see this is small bronze stones in this picture in the slide. It's very small. Uh, its importance lies in the fact that it was found in an intact layer within the past layers. Unlike most of other archaeological findings that were transported from other sites as the past 
has been used as a garbage dump by Sabahin. After several comparisons and consultation with some of the specialists in bronze tools from late Roman period, such as Dr. Dominique Benizes, Dr. Dominique Benizes is creator uh, in Louvre Museum in Paris. Uh, she is uh, a specialist in, tool, in bronze tools in late Roman period, especially from Egypt. We discovered that that tools is a major part of bronze chandelier. Perhaps it was one of the means of lighting of the bus. The study proved that bronze part belonged to a type of chandelier dates to the period between fourth day uh, to uh, day to the period between fourth and sixth century AD, and this is consistent with a national date that was proposed for the bus, which was posted on the architecture design of the bus. We can see two chandelier, bronze chandelier, dating back uh, late Roman period, founded in Egypt, one in the Louvre Museum in Paris, and second one in the Coptic Museum in, in Cairo. Uh, the major tool in this ch chandelier, it is, it's chandelier, sorry, it is very similar with my bronze tool. Publication, uh, publications published a number of articles about my archaeological campaigns on the eastern bass of Hermopolis and the water management. In addition to publishing most of this work is in my dissertation to obtain a PhD degree, which I am currently working on my final year at Anshams University in Cairo. Three articles have been published. The first one in, uh, published in 2022, uh, uh, titled uh, under Roman Aquarium, a study of unpublished Roman Aquarium in Hermobilis Magna, published in H. Shams University uh, Periodical in Cairo. The second one, uh, under titled Excavation of Roman Public Pass at Hermobilis Magna in 2022-23, sorry published in Egyptian Archaeology in uh, uh, NES in London. The final one, Water Contents at Antonini Street in Hermopolis Magna. In 2024, I published in periodical of Enchamps University, the name of periodical, uh, it's Oyono. My future plans for the time. Actually, in the future, I hope to complete my excavation at this, uh, this site, east of Ashmonian Muslim Cemetery, next to the Roman Pass, for which excavation have not been completed. There is a limestone temple adjacent to it from the west. It is likely that, below, that it uh, belongs to the Ptolemaic or Roman period. It needs to future excavation in it. If I obtain the funding to support my future campaigns on the site, I will try to obtain an excavation concession from the permanent committee uh, at the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities in uh, Cairo. I hope so. In the end, I would like to thank us to Egypt Exploration Society, uh, EES, for its support of my archaeological expedition to Hermobilis Magna as well as Dr. Pierre Angier Rodin, researcher at CNRS, my PhD dissertation supervisor. Without your support and advice, I would not have reached to this stage, as well as uh, my team uh, of my exhibition, especially Mahmoud Abdesamia, my colleague and my companion, uh, and all of workmen who worked with me are uh, greatly appreciated. In this picture, we can see uh, my workmen, uh, Zakaria, Mustafa, Rada, Radi, uh, Abdul Aziz, Ashur, Abdul Menam, Salah, Ali, Muhammad Walid, and Mustafa, Muhammad uh, Abdul Fatah, and uh, Muhammad Musa. Uh, thanks so much for uh, attention. 
thank you so much, Hesham. What what an interesting talk and a brilliant update to the EA article that was featured in the EES publication uh, late, yeah, early last year. So thank you so much, Hesham, uh, for your time today. I think it's been a wonderful talk and very interesting and great to see some of the uh, developments at the site and some of those extra discoveries like those uh, the sections of the chandelier. I think it was nice to imagine relaxing in an ancient Roman bath with a chandelier above your head. It's quite a nice picture, maybe. <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, we wish you all the best for your future endeavours and your uh, growing career. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you in the audience, of course, uh, to help us continue supporting projects like Hashams, uh, we do rely on donations. So please do visit our website to make a donation. If you want to support research projects such as this one, we do have a, a research fund that you can donate to specifically. So your uh, contribution will be used on future research projects. Uh, so please do visit the website for more information about that. I think in the meantime, uh, all that is left for me to say is a huge thanks to Hashem Abdel Kader for your time, and we look forward to hearing even more about this site in future. So, thank you so much. Thanks to you, uh, Charlotte, for your uh, for the total organization and the permission for my lecture. Thanks so much, and thanks for AS for support my archaeological exhibition and her marvelous. Uh, without uh, AS, I can't make any excavation here, marvelous. Thanks so much. Well, thank you for conducting such a brilliant project. Thanks. So, and every, any, if anyone uh, from participants have any questions, uh, you can send it to me. It's okay. Yeah, perfect. I think your email was on the screen earlier. So, yeah, please do yeah. get in touch. Thank you Thanks. all. And Thanks. see you at another EES event soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.